Seal Notes Magazine is your source for what's happening on the local, national, and international scene with news, reviews, and interviews. Get more notes for measure at Seal Notes Magazine. Your list of the music 101 with your host, Alexis Steele. Sponsored by Steel Notes Magazine. You can find them at the web, folks, at www.steelnotesmagazine.com. Hi, this is Alexis Steele with Music 101. It gives me great pleasure this evening to bring to you co-host of VH1's classic That Metal Show and comedian, Don Jameson. How you doing, Don? Hey, it's great to see you again. You're looking rocking as always. I appreciate you, you having Don. me. Thank you, Don. Glad you could be on tonight. Um, Don and I are, buddy, are buddies from Chiller. Uh, a couple years ago, and then, and then this year again, hanging out at Chiller, having fun with the rockers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, not a lot this year, but, uh, you no, know. No, not a lot this year. We didn't have the rock room. Yeah, you're right. We, yeah, well, the rock room was small. It was myself, and there was a rock photographer in there who was a super nice guy, and Lita Ford, which was great, because I've known Lita for a bunch of years, and uh, we were in there singing and jamming guitars and, oh, and all cool. kinds I of stuff. I missed that. Weekend. When did you yeah. do that? It must not have been Friday night. We waited till you left the room, and then we did it. Uh, uh, we can't let sure. Alexis see this. We're having too much fun here. No, um, oh, no, man. you know, it was great. You know, she, we, you know, we, um, she was so friendly with the fans, and everybody had a good time. And if, if someone bought one of her guitars, she actually played a song live. And she like, was right actually the selling her before. guitars. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, somebody, people got a free concert if they bought one of her guitars, which meant wow. I got a free concert. Nice. Well, I, I saw a picture there. of you with uh, holding one of the guitars. I saw smoke coming out. of <laughs> That was the Ace Frehley smoking guitar. His oh, uh, guitar okay. guy was there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we had a good little, you know, we had a little music history going on in that room. It was fun. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Don, um, let me tell our audience how you got your start. First of all, you know, how you got hooked up with the whole thing with VH1's Classic That Metal Show. And when did you first get interested in doing the whole comedy thing? Oh, boy. You know, it was it's just one of those things, Alexis. Like, from when I was a kid, my first two albums were Kiss Destroyer and George Carlin, Occupation Fool. So, for me, those have been my, my two biggest worlds, the things I love the most is rock and comedy. And just somehow, by some crazy chance, those worlds have collided for me um, in my career, which is amazing. But um, yeah, it's, you know, it's nothing that was really well thought out. Just all the worlds just sort of came together when they needed to. I was originally wanted to be, a, you know, a rock star, you know. But, you know, then I was, I was in bands in high school and I was like, yeah, I don't want to lug equipment and struggle and you know, have to split the money five ways. And, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of good things about being a band, but there's a lot of tough things. And oh, yeah. as a guitar mm -hmm. player, I kind of peaked out anyway, as far as like my commitment to it. But I knew I wanted to be an entertainer. So, you know, I was friends with a bunch of guys who were comics. I said, let me try comedy. And uh, once I You're did that, natural. I said, okay, this is it. Yeah, all right, good. But and and when I do comedy, I do it with a rock and roll attitude. You know, I try I try to give people, you know, a big show. You know, bigger than just a guy standing there talking to the audience. So I bring that kind of energy. And then, um, you know, myself and my partner uh, in crime and comedy, Jim Florentine, we met the great Eddie Trunk, and uh, yeah, the, the, we knew we had a. We kind of had a, a good chemistry together, the three of us, and we went to VH1 with uh, some ideas the, jotted down on a few pieces of paper, and we figured, out hey, we'll get a free lunch out of them, and they'll never call us back again. And two days later, they did, which was amazing. So, and we did four ended up fourteen seasons of that metal show. Yeah, so that was what from two thousand eight to two thousand fifteen. Yeah, right, into sixteen. So, so yeah, what happened? I mean, like. Did you, uh, whose idea was it to end? Was it theirs or, you know, did you guys feel like you, you ran it out or, or what? 
No, no. I mean, the good thing about the, what happened with the show is even though it was called That Metal Show, the longer we did it, the more we broadened it out. You know, because so we had everybody from classic rock artists like Heart and Sticks, mm -hmm. all the way up to, you know, Dillinger Escape Plan, Amon Amarth, like some of the stuff on the more extreme metal side. So, yeah, there were, there, you know, that was in the, the case. It was just the, the channel went away. So, you know, you got to give us credit. The three of us know how to get a, a series canceled. You know, we take down the whole <laughs> network with us when we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, the whole shift goes down, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. So, um, are you in New York? Do you live in New York, or do you live out in Cali? Where are you at? No, I'm Jersey. I'm Jersey. Yep. Oh, you're in Jersey. Okay. What part? Um, you want my address? Yeah, you can give me your address. So I'll send you a bill. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No, I live down by the. I live down by the beach in New Jersey. Oh, and um, you well, it's great. It's great because my life is so chaotic. You know, it's like I'm always on. Um, planes and traveling to, to go places to perform which of course i love doing um and um but when i'm home i just i just want quiet and peaceful and you know when i live by the beach and i can open up my back door and hear the, you know the waves just washing up on the on the shore man that, that oh, really you live that close huh yeah yeah i got peace of mind nice yeah I'm, actually i'm going to be taking a trip uh, the end of June into the beginning of July down there by Cape May in an Airbnb. So I'm looking forward to it. Cape May is awesome. I, I don't live that far down, but um, yeah, you'll have a great time. Where are you? I'm in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Oh, all right. All right. Some of my early days of comedy was was playing in the bar at the Ramada at the, uh, in oh, Allentown. In Whitehall. In yeah. Whitehall, MacArthur Road. Get out. <laughs> I used to live in Whitehall. Oh wow! Yeah, we used to we used to go we used to go over. You know, you play Friday and Saturday. I think you made a hundred dollars a night, and uh, and but on the Saturday you had all day, so you would take passes from the club and you go to the mall across the street and you know hand them out to girls and stuff and you <laughs> you know try to get <laughs> what people. What year to did come. you do that? When oh, did that you do that? the early day? You know, probably the early days, like like probably late nineties, early two thousands. Really? Oh wow. Yeah. I never knew. If I would have known, I would have been there. <laughs> and back then, I thought, like, when I got that gig, I was like, oh, man, I'm playing the Ramada in Allentown. Like, I'm, I, I'm happy like you really now. hit the big time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I'm surprised. And what about Crocodile Rock? Did you ever go to Crocodile Rock? You know what? I never made it there. Yeah, I know that was such a legendary venue. Um, but, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. I performed yeah. there. I held benefits. I had an office there. For my wow. entertainment to see, yeah, good friends, my buddy Joe Clark, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's not there anymore, which, you know, unfortunately. No, actually, just like a couple years ago, up until a couple years ago. Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, you hate to lose these legendary uh, rock clubs, you know. There's a couple in Jersey uh, didn't make it through COVID, unfortunately, but. Um, well, you know what? Yeah. They're, they're building, they have the PPL Center, which is the real big one. That's like 11,000 or whatever, however many it holds. But now they're building a music venue right now called the Archer Music Hall, which, you know, is a smaller venue. So who knows? Maybe it can get you out there. I would love to. Yeah, it's been, it's been a few years, but um, yeah, Jersey's got, you know, Jersey's got a great, you know, rock scene and, um, you know, I don't know down in Philly as well, but um, yeah, I, I uh, you know, I live near Asbury Park, so you know, I, nice. I get down to the Stone I, Pony and all those. Oh places. wow, yeah, I've never been to the Stone Pony. I always wanted to go. I've never been there. <laughs> it's I, a couple, it, you know, over the years, it's, it it almost went under, and then you know, Springsteen would come in and play a, a benefit show, and they get the money to keep it open again. So, um, it, how far you know, is that from Cape May? Uh, you know, probably an hour and a half. An hour and a half, so it's a drive, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, well, Cape May is way down, yeah, but it's nice down there, very nice. Yeah. Well, we want to hit Wildwood. I haven't been to Wildwood since 1996. So. It's, it looks exactly the same, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I miss the clubs, and, you know, yeah. and all that, and, you know, that's got the biggest boardwalk around, and, you know. Yeah. I like yeah, all yeah. the flash and the lights and all that stuff, you know. And watch yeah, the well, obviously. <laughs> oh my god! You, you you were made you were made for the for for the bright lights and spotlights. 
Yep. Lights, camera, action. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. So tell me, um, all right, so on that metal show, do you have a uh, favorite or funniest memory of one of the rockers on the show? Wow. There's, a, there's so many. But, um, you know, one of, the, one of our favorite guests was always Stephen Adler from Guns N' Roses. And because um, Stephen is, is such a sweet, sweet guy, um, he, you fall in love with him instantly when you meet him. And he's so genuine. Now, you know, obviously he's had a, a troubled life, but he really is a beautiful guy. And when we filmed in Los Angeles, he would, you know, come down and guest. But even when he wasn't a guest, he would just come down and do this thing that we called Stump the Trunk, where oh, people in the that, audience... Yeah. Yeah, would try to stump Eddie Trunk because you know he's sort of the the encyclopedia of heavy metal, um, and but Stephen would just pop in to do it, and he'd surprise us. And but he could never get him, you know. Like he must have done it four or five times. Eddie got him every time, and he got so <laughs> frustrated. And then one time he finally got him, and he went, you know, and he, and he got. We gave a. He went into the box of junk, and he got an Alice Cooper CD out of it. And he's like, I finally got you, Eddie. I got you. And he was so happy. And then what happened was we went back, you know, about six months later to film some more shows. It was Eddie's birthday. And they wheeled out a giant birthday cake. They didn't tell us this was coming. And the, the and you're expecting a girl in a bikini, you know, to pop mm -hmm. out of the top of the cake, right? Yeah. No, the cake opens up and Steven Adler pops out. Oh, wow. <laughs> And he goes, Eddie, I was wrong on the last something trunk. You were right. And he goes, I brought the CD back with me. He still had the Alice Cooper CD, and oh, yeah. he brought it back with him. And that was just one of the funniest moments. Because oh, like God. I said, they didn't even tell us they were going to do that. So our reactions were totally genuine and natural. And it was, yeah, it was just great. I, I love him, man. He's such a good dude. He's playing here in Jersey soon. So I can't wait to go see him. Oh, and that's a trip. Well, I was going to say now for your shows, um, your comedy shows, you film that in front of a live audience at comedy clubs, rock clubs, and places like that, right? Yeah, well, I have a new album, you know, called No Sleep Till McSorley's, which uh, I'm showing if people are watching this on video. And it's, it's making me disappear. Special effects uh, here, yeah, folks. That's Free of charge. I have a blurred background because I would always disappear in the background. <laughs> okay. But, um, yeah, so I, I always like to record my, my albums in weird places. I did one in a rock club. I did one in a speakeasy. And this one was in McSorley's old ale house in New York City, which doesn't do any comedy shows. But we uh, built a stage and brought in a sound system, and we made it happen in there because it's my favorite drinking place in New York City. And um, I just thought, you know, this material I'm doing right now needs to be done in front of beer drinkers and hell raisers. So right. it was the perfect place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a lot different doing it in front of a live audience than like what we're doing here because there there's no, well, I was going to say there's no room to correct any bloopers or screw ups or anything like that, you know? Well, that's my, you know, career is, is, a, is being a live stage performer, you know? Right. Um, you know, I mean, I like podcasting and doing all that stuff. And um, but I, you know, the, the live gigs is what it's all about. And yeah, you're just, you know, my favorite expression is jump and the net will appear. And because that's what I do every night is like, it's a leap of faith. Like, OK, you know, um, you know, most of the crowds think I'm funny, but, you know, you never know. You, you some, Every once in a while you run into a crowd is ready to take you down a, a peg or two. But um Hey, that's the challenge of, of doing what we do. Exactly, exactly. So now you have um, several comedy CDs. And for me, I say, Don Stand Up Act and comedy CDs are no holds barred, no subject sacred show with subjects of sex rock and roll titles like Miserable Sober, Booze Rehab, and Liquid Cocaine. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> well, you got to get gotta... out of it. Yeah, well, you got to name the tracks funny names because, you know, unfortunately, like I'm old school. And like I said, I was, you know, holding up the CD before. Yeah. I love the physical product. This album is also out on, available for pre-order now on vinyl. But let's face it. 
most and probably 80 percent of what people are going to do is download it right so right. i understand that so and a lot of people cherry pick tracks so if i can come up with funny titles for the tracks people will look and go oh that looks funny i'm going to download so that so, to, yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah so so that's why you know you, you also make the track names as funny as possible too so people will download them okay so you have live and hilarious how yeah, that was my first leather. one how about, how about how been for leather how then for laughter and i know that you did that purposely because people are immediately gonna think that you know like i just did right now uh this one i thought was quite interesting communication breakdown with a prank calls terrorizing telemarketers so do you actually do that on there well that's a whole different thing that's obviously not stand-up comedy the other albums okay. that you mentioned are all comedy albums and yes all my my stand-up albums are all tributes to my favorite bands so mm. live and hilarious is live and dangerous from thin lizzy hell bent for laughter is hell bent for leather by judas priest right. communication breakdown led zeppelin and the new one is no sleep till hammersmith except it's no sleep till mcsorley so it's from the motorhead album um and i got a, a denim and laughter which is a, a, a tribute to saxon but terrorizing telemarketers is a very different thing yeah that those are prank calls where te telemarketers call and my, and myself and jim florentine you know my my uh, partner in crime uh, once again we uh we torture them uh because we have nothing going on in the daytime so uh <laughs> we've done seven of these uh, CD. So now, how and, did, how does that work? Because I mean, you, how are you calling? Are you waiting till telemarketers? I mean, how does that work? Tell me. Yeah, we we yeah we we sit around in his basement, and wait for the phone to ring. Okay. <laughs> and so then, what do you do? Like, give me an example of what you would do. Well, like you know, a telemarketer will call, and they'll start to go into their spiel, and then he'll go, uh, "Hey, well, you know, um, you know, my roommate is here. You know, do you mind if he jumps on because he's he he can help me out with this, and then yeah, yeah. that'll give me an excuse to get on. And now you have the three of us, and then you know, we, we figure out, you know, in the moment, like, okay, what are we going to do with this? Like, one of the ones we did recently is that was one we it's called COVID mask. And and the guy was like kept he wanted to sell uh, Jim a mortgage, uh, and but he kept there was one piece of information he needed and only I knew it, and, but I wouldn't take my mask off. So when he ever asked me, he goes, "I need it. I need to know how much you know you're selling the thing for." And I go, "Well, <laughs> so every time he needed the, the, an important piece of information, I couldn't give it to him." And he goes, can you take the mask off? And then Jim's like, no, he doesn't want to. He's not vaccinated. And we just, you know, it's all theater of the mind yeah. kind of stuff, you know. And, <laughs> oh, uh, of God. course, you know, we just drove him. We just, you know, we just twisted him up for about three and a half minutes. And he finally uh, gave up gave on up. us. And hung up. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I've had many years back in the day from telemarketing, even doing political calls. And people actually have stuff on their machines like well, if a telemarketer calls, then they they saw all kinds of crazy stuff, and then people, you know, I like. I did that stuff too in college. I did political polling and mm -hmm. and some telemarketer stuff just to make a few extra uh, bucks to buy beer. But um, yeah, I mean, they you know these some of these companies, you know, they do they you know they take advantage of elderly people or, or right. you know people maybe you know English is not their primary language, and you know they have it down to a had to a thing like if you just say the word yes they they just automatically start charging your credit card for things so you know yeah. it, it, it took us two idiots uh to turn the tables on on them for once and uh, so we get back at them for everybody who uh who they've taken advantage of mm -hmm. and hopefully they're funny exactly okay so now tell me again about um your latest cd and when did that come out uh, it came out uh, April the 19th, and uh, believe it or not, Alexis, it came out and debuted at number one on the iTunes wow. charts. That's so, awesome. Uh, yeah, I was, believe me, I was I'm more shocked than you are. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it, was a, it was a nice surprise to wake up to that day. You know, you work, you know, people, you know, people, what people don't see behind the scenes is obviously the process of, of, comics writing the material then trying it on stage and sure. some of the stuff not doesn't work you know and uh 
you know, we spend a few years, you know, really getting a full 45 minutes or an hour uh, to the point where, you know, it's a, it's a, a great headlining set. And then you put out an album and unlike a band who puts out an album, they want to play those songs on the road. Comic puts out an album. Well, now we want to retire all that material because we've been doing it for a few years and right. we're sick of it. Mm -hmm. um, and also if people buy your album, you know, they, once you know the punchline, you know, it's not quite as funny the second time or the third time. Once the, you know how the rabbit comes out of that hat, right, it's not right. quite the same. We come out of the hat but like this. <laughs> Right. Right. Yeah. And but uh, yeah, but I'm very proud of, of the way it came out. And, um, you know, there's a little something for everybody on there. Like I always tell people just because, you know, all the packaging to the album is rock related. If mm -hmm. you get it, that's a bonus. But what's on the inside is for everybody, whether you like rock music or not. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, did you ever do any acting? Yeah, I took acting classes years ago. You know, when you first start out, you're sort of grasping at everything, you know. Um, not not porn, because I'm not built for it, but, you know, r regular acting. I was in some yeah. theater groups and things like that. But I just, I never had a passion for that either. Like, same as with the guitar. Like, I like playing guitar, but I, I didn't have the passion to really pursue to it to the level. It. To what? Yeah. To put the work into it. That you know, doing comedy, I was, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I do, I have a passion for this. I want to put the work in, and the acting was like, yeah, you know, let me, let me learn some skills. And if somebody wants to put me in one of their movies, you know, hey, Adam Sandler, I'm, I'm available, you know. Yeah, there up. you go. We'll put that out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You never know, but yeah, yeah, um, it, yeah. I just, I was like, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to work a crappy day job you know, waiting for the phone to ring from auditions right. and all that stuff for a craft that I don't really have a great passion for. Right. Um, I, I admire the people who do do that for years and years, you know, and, but I was like, you know what? I love comedy and I get to go out and be on stage every night and um, do it as much or as little as I want. And even though I'm not a household name, um, I still make a pretty nice living at it. So now um, do you have any shows coming up? Always have shows, yeah. Always have shows coming up. So for people, you know, you can follow me on my social media. Um, my website's donjameson.com, and I'm on, you know, I'm on Twitter and uh, um, or X, I guess they call it now, and Instagram X, yeah. and Facebook. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. look me up on there and come out and see a show. You know, um, you know, love to see people out. Okay, so do you have anything coming up? Like, do you ever, you know, well, we're going to talk about uh, getting you out here. You know, I'll contact you about that. But absolutely. Um, so, like, where do you usually perform? You know, where do you usually do your shows at? It's you know, just all over the country. You know, um, I just got back yesterday from I was down in Tampa doing some shows, and I'm going to Dallas and going back to Florida and okay, going so you're all over the U.S. Louisville, Kentucky, and wherever they pay me, Alexis. Okay. All right, that sounds good. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're gonna work on getting you over here. That's what we're going to do. We'll bring you back to the area again. I would love to. You know, I have a soft spot in my heart for Allentown and a lot of rural Pennsylvania because those are the gigs that I was doing when I first started out. I wasn't headlining the improv. I wasn't doing theaters or, you know, big places. We were playing hotel bars and conference rooms and ballrooms and stuff like that. And, you know, but long before the days of like, GPS, you know, so you'd have to like call the club and try to get directions from New Jersey. And they'd be like, I don't know how to get you here from New Jersey. And you'd go on MapQuest and you'd end up in Canada. Oh my God, MapQuest, yeah. <laughs> but you, those are the days you really remember fondly because that's, that's how you built your act, you know, was, right, was sure. just getting on the road and slugging it out. Yeah, that's what you got to do. Yeah. Well, that sounds awesome, Don. So we're going to work on that. And, um, you know, we're going to get everybody to come out and see your show. Absolutely. Allentown, you're not, you're not rid of me yet. I'm coming back. Yeah, he's going to come back with a vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, always. And a number one album, so. Yeah, that's right. That's awesome. Yeah, so um, the album is available where now? 
Your oh, latest- you know, download for the people, you know, uh, who want to download it, you know, iTunes, obviously Apple Music, Spotify, all the streaming services. Um, or you can you can pick up a, a, a CD. If you like the physical uh, copies, you can uh, come see me live and buy a CD. And um, I'll give I'll send you the link for the vinyl pre-order. This is fun. So McSorley's Old Ale House is exactly what it says. It's it's an ale house, and that's all they serve is their ale, light mm-hmm. and dark ale. McSorley's light and dark, and that's it. There's no wine there's no booze nothing so the vinyl is going to come in two colors light ale color and dark ale color so people have the choice and vinyl freaks like me because i still collect vinyl because i don't do drugs and i don't have kids i love collecting vinyl so a guy (laughs) like me i have to have both colors Right. right so um but yeah those are those are available as well and i'm doing that through a company called experiencevinyl.com mm-hmm. um that's matt sorum from guns and roses vinyl company oh, so yeah, matt's nice. matt's okay. putting it putting it out for me and the packaging is they did such a great job with it so for the again for the people who like the physical thing who like to hold something in their hand right. you know I, that i can't you know recommend that, that higher that's awesome well, that sounds great. So DomJameson.com, that's your website, right? Yeah, yep, yep. And uh, my YouTube channel is just YouTube Don Jameson. Lots of stand-up clips up there. Some of the terrorizing telemarketer clips that we talked about Yeah, I want to listen to that. <laughs> you, there's seven CDs, and those are all available as well um, on all the streaming services. And uh, those are those are a ton of fun, so... Okay, great. All right, Don, well, I will thank you so much for being on the show tonight. And uh, we're going to, like I said, we're going to get you out here. We're going to get people to, to go to the shows and buying your CDs and having fun right along with you. I'll be back to Rock the Valley soon. You will. All right, Don, you have a great day. You will. Night. You as well. And thank you. Thank you, Jonesy, behind the scenes. Be good, brother. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye. See you later. This is Alexis Steele from Music 101. You're listening to Music 101 with your host, Alexis Steele. Sponsored by Steele Notes Magazine. You can find them at the web, folks, at www.steelnotesmagazine.com. Hi, this is Alexis Steele from Music 101. Stay tuned to hear what's happening from your favorite national recording artists and get my answers to your music industry questions.